I bring you good news and greetings from God himself who has decided to send me today by God's grace. Second Samuel chapter 22 from verse 1 to 7. It is talking about David's song of praise because God is, is, is very happy when we praise him and when we lift him and when we thank him. Because when we do that, he appreciates us and he considers us even for more blessings. Second Samuel chapter 22. David sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, the Lord is my rock, my fortress. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior from violent men. You save me. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I am saved from my enemies. The waves of death swelled about me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of, of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I called out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We should be thankful and praising to God always. Because he does many great things. Number one, like last night, we went to sleep. In the sleep, we are like, we are as, as good or as bad as dead. But in the morning, we are awake. I, before you raise up to go and do other things, you should do what David did. You should kneel down and wake up your wife like me. Do you have one? If you don't have, we shall pray for you. If you don't have, it is okay. You go. They are not talking about any wife here, but they say he rose up and went before God and thanked him honestly. Because he said, in my distress, I called to the Lord. I called out to my God. From the temple, he heard my voice and my, my cry came to his ears. Do you know that when you cry out to your God, your creator, his, your cry will go to his ears. This is my assurance. But he's happy more, leave our own cry, but especially when you are praising him and when you are thanking him. Amen. Anita, you read this one, I read another, another one. Praise the Lord, all you nations, extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love toward us and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his Lord, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord. It is a command. Yes. God is ordering you. Somewhere in the army, they say they do not discuss orders. Sometimes God says, do this, and it is not anybody to say no. So today, today's subject is a command. Amen. He has asked you and begged you. Today it is a command Amen. from the Lord. That's why the witness is reading it, not me. Give thanks to the Lord for his good, his love, and yours forever. He reminds you as a parent, 
that you praise me because my love endures forever. I have kept you, I feed you, I bless, I cover you with clothes, I take you to school, I take you home, I pay your rent, I give you nice food. Even when you are sick, I hear you. She tells you, don't forget me. Don't forget him. Even me, I don't. Let Israel say, today we say, let CNC say so. His love endures forever. Let's all say so. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. Is it true? Fantastic. Continue. In my anguish, I cried to the Lord, and he answered by setting me free. The Lord is with me. The Lord is with you. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? When I am praising my God and when I am lifting him by thanking him, the Lord is with me. He is my helper. I will look in triumph on my enemies. Your enemies are not necessarily people. They could be some, but your enemies are problems of this world. Hunger, lack, sickness, disease, infirmity, lack of happiness, etc. Those are the enemies. There are many. But because it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Because man does not solve those problems. He is part of them anyway. So therefore, in God, that is your refuge. Those problems that I'm talking about are too powerful and they are very many. But because you have your God and you have taken refuge in him, they will all become to nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. They swarmed me like bees, but they died out as quickly as burning thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. Swarm, when bees are in a big group moving together, they call it a swarm. So those problems gather themselves in momentum to bring you down. But because you have your God, he cut them off in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Isn't it marvelous? Your happiness, your hope, your future in eternity, because everything has an end. Coming to the Lord, praising him and having hope in him, including baptism and all that, means that you are moving towards your eternity. Eternity means life everlasting. That is your, your gift at the end of your life. Amen. The Lord is my strength, my song. He has become my salvation. Your salvation means something that has saved you from all those threats of the world that have collected together to bring you down. Amen. Shouts of joy and victory resound the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. Because now when I see you in front of me, none of you are babies. Babies are the other side. This means that God has done great and mighty things in your lives by protecting you, by feeding you over time, and by giving you good news, even special care and support. Hallelujah. Amen. God's right hand does mighty and great things for us, for remembrance. Hallelujah. Romans 15, verse 9 to 13. Let's all read. So that the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. Therefore, 
I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing hymns to your name. Amen. That time, there was a difference between Gentiles and then the chosen ones. But today, we are privileged to be all called children of God. There is no more Gentiles. Rejoice. All Gentiles say, rejoice, brothers and sisters, with the people, with his people. His people are you and me. And again, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. And sing praises to him, all you peoples. So all together, let us sing and raise him higher because it is a command. And again, as prophet Isaiah says, that is that time before Jesus was born. The root of Jesse, it means he's talking about the, the chronology of Jesus because Jesus is coming from this line of Jesse. Will spring up, meaning at a given time in future, Jesus would be born. One will raise to rule over to the nation of Israel. He was talking of Jesus who was going to come that time to be born. The Gentiles will hope in him. So he was referring to Jesus in future who would be born so that all of us would be called his children as it is today. Mm. 13. May God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So Paul was writing to them, lifting them up that they, as you can see those words, may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as we trust in him and as we may, overf uh, we may overflow with hope in the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Definitely, when we praise God and lift him high, first, the first gift is to give us Holy Spirit and in the Holy Spirit, we will overflow with this joy and peace. Amen. We should indeed praise and be thankful. Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. Uh -huh. Anita, come and read this. We shall be alternating. Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? With confidence, the Lord is our helper. Because we are, it is plural. We will not be afraid. What can man do to, to us? Therefore, when we are before God in thankfulness and lifting his name and praising him, that's what will happen. He will make us confident and also he will, he will make us not be afraid which means he's our defender, our present help in times of calamity and danger. Uh, so it is exhortations I'm using you and also lifting each other. Psalms 56, verses three to four. In praising God and being thankful, we are strengthened and our faith grows and then our trust is consolidated. When I am afraid, I will trust in you, God, whose word I praise. 
Do you know that we are here praising his word? This is exactly what we are doing. He's very happy when we are doing that. Do you know that you are here praising, th uh, praising your God and he's pleased with you as an individual and corporately as a church? This is the word. When I am afraid, some people are afraid of many things. I will not go into those. When we are afraid, we will trust in our God, whose word we praise every day. In God, in God we trust. We will not be afraid. What can mortal man do to me? Mortal man means this human being with flesh and blood. He can't do anything. They are talking about the power of God, which is beyond human comprehension. Exodus 25, verse 1 to 2. God was ordering Moses to tell the people what they should do. He was, he was giving them standards. In, in police, there are departments of standards, even in uh, other departments of government, so that people keep standards for them to measure up to his expectations. So this is the word. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering for me from each man whose heart prompts him to give. You can read it again. Do you know God would say you are to receive the offering for me? Which offering? The Bible says the best offering to God is your heart. Then those other offerings of that time were animals, birds, uh, grains, gold and silver, etc. But the best of all is your heart. So kindly read it again. The Lord said to Moses. Today, wait, wait, wait. The Lord said to Andrew. The Lord says to me. Uh huh, go ahead. Tell the Israelites to bring me an Tell offering. Tell members of CNC. Tell the members of CNC. Uh -huh. To bring me an offering. You bring an offering to God. It, it ranges from money. But the most important one is are your hearts. Uh -huh. You are to receive the offering for me. Yeah. Today... I have been commissioned to, re to receive God's offering on his behalf. So kindly render me your hearts on behalf of God. Kindly posture your hearts towards God. Then I will have done my part like Moses did. From each man whose heart prompts him to give. Yes, each man. I, nobody is forcing you. Not even God can force you. But because it is a command, may I have delivered my message? The other time they were commanded to offer an offering on altars. Today, can you please uh, tell, he said tell, I'm telling you, offer your, posture your hearts to God. That is the command of God as 1st of October. Hallelujah. Thank you. It brings your heart to God, especially when you confess, when you are asking God for forgiveness and also for restitution. Restitution means when you go back to the person you wronged or the person you injured and you kneel down and say, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. God is happy with that. Numbers 28, verse 1 to 3. He's talking of daily offerings. God expects us to thank him daily because in so doing, it brings our hearts to obedience. The Lord said to Moses. Okay. The Lord said to Andrew. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Give this command to CNC members. And say to them, See that you present to me 
at the appointed time, the food for my offerings made by fire as an uh, wait, aroma. Wait, wait, wait. See to it that please posture your hearts towards God at an appointed time. An appointed time is this time which God has given us. This very time. <laughs> Clap for the word of God. Uh -huh. Continue. See that you present to me at an appointed time the food for my offerings. He is made by fire as an aroma pleasing to him. Aroma is good smell. When you posture your hearts towards God, it causes an aroma. An, an aroma and God is pleased. An aroma is when they prepare very good food. I don't want to mention it because it differs with different people. Others it is ground nuts, others it is meat, others it is chicken, others it is shabway, what? ETC. When your hearts are postured to him, it is an aroma for God. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Say to them, Yes. This is the offering made by fire that you are to present to the Lord. Okay, go slowly. Now, I am telling you, at this material time, when you posture your hearts today, now, 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 then the aroma will come. Mm. We go to Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 to 7. I thank my God every time I remember you. Uh -huh. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. Hallelujah. These, these things are good. Me, it pleases me. Ah, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. This is, these are gospels, letters of Paul. He was encouraging now. This time it was Philippian, now they are Philippian. The other time it was Hebrews, the other Romans. Now he's referring to Philippians. Being confident of this. Yes. That he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. This is an assurance. You are going to read it again. An assurance from God. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Clap your, for yourselves. Kindly clap again for the word. It is like when you are told you are given a job that at the end of the month you will be getting so much money. This is an assurance of your wage. Read it again. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on. Wait, wait, wait. Who began this good work? Isn't it good? Yes. Okay, go ahead. He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion, to completion until, until the, the day, day of, of Jesus Christ. Christ. That's what you will earn. That is what you will earn. You are not laboring for nothing. I assure you that you are not wasting your time. God is, will, not for, will not forget you, and it's not in vain. Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 3. Verses 4 to 5, we are talking about King Solomon also as an example. Because of loving God and of praising God and of lifting God like his father, he offered a sacrifice of a thousand animals. Do you know a thousand? Every road here in Rufra takes 20 cows. So, which means he offered 50 of the 50 rolls. 
of 20 cows. 50 times 20 equals to 1,000. So that is the kind of offering. For us, we are failing to offer even a chicken. Even its egg. So, we, you can see the level of commitment and offering, not because he was rich, but it shows you the heart. And if you are doing it to God, God will be touched at the level of your sacrifice, at the level of your commitment, at the level of your love for him. Therefore, God opened up for him to receive whatever he wanted. Put it up and let it be read. The king went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices, for that was the most important high place. And Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. So now you can see if offerings and thanking God and praising him can open, can touch God's heart to the level of telling you, giving you an open check and say, ask me whatever you want. Isn't it enough? Because if he asks you that, you will have fulfilled your life journey. Because you write whatever you want and it will be granted in one day. And it, it is so because of the level of sacrifice, the level of commitment, the level of love, because definitely the word of, of God says it touched God's heart. And he gave him an open check. The same can happen to you. The same can happen to me. Okay, Solomon was a king, but was it, is it restrictive? Does it say that us who are not kings are not children of God? We are his. Therefore, let us raise our banner at the level of commitment, at the level of love, and then it will touch God's heart. And us as well, God will give us. What he gave to Solomon, don't be surprised, he can give you more. That's what I can say. You, you, you have heard that I have, today I've been God's messenger, therefore I speak in anointing. Who knows? Verse five, God was touched by the level of sacrifice. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. This Solomon was a son of man like you. And he had a mother, he had a father called David. None of us was not created by a father and a mother. Therefore, we all qualify for touching God's heart. And after touching God's heart, we are able to receive like he received. Hallelujah. Second Samuel 22 verses 1 to 4. It talks about David's song of praise. David thanked God when God delivered him from all enemies I am presenting to you a few and many more examples that I have not talked about to always remember to praise and thank God for the many ways of God's love, care, advice, provision, support, salvation, expected and promised eternal life. So let's read this one. David sang to the Lord the words of this song, when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, the Lord 
is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge and my savior. From violent men, you save me. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I am saved from my enemies. My shield and the horn of my salvation he is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior. From violent men, you save me. So God is our fortress and the place of refuge. Hallelujah. Our gift in the end is none other than a gift of eternal life. Clap for God. Put up Hebrews 13, 20, and 21. May the God of peace and through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that grant shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him Amen. through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.